All right, guys. We are going to start Ooh. chapter nine. And chapter nine um, is all about sequences and series. We're going to start a little bit at a time and just bring it up to what it is we need. First thing you need to know is that sequences are it's just a list of terms and series is the sum of a sequence. A sequence is just a list of terms, and we're going to do a bunch of them today. But the series indicates that it's a sum of those sequences. And there's different kinds of sequences that we can have. We can have arithmetic sequences, we can have geometric sequences, or you can have sequences that are neither one of those. But um, for right now, we're just going to ease in with chapter 9, section 1. All right? Section 2 is arithmetic sequences. Section 3 is geometric sequences which is why I'm not writing those words up on the board. We'll get to those words, okay? So, one of the things I want you to realize is that the list of terms that you're going to have are typically written like this. A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4, dot, dot, dot. And some people call them A sub N, each one is an A sub N. It just depends on which term you're talking about. So A sub N is the nth term. That means that A sub 7 is going to be the what? 7th seven. term. All right. Now I know that when you were back in your Algebra 1 HSA class that you had to do this stuff. I know that they gave you a pattern and they said, you know, if this pattern continues, what would be the 10th term? Stuff like that. When they've also, you know, given you formulas for a pattern and said, what is the fifth term of this sequence or something like that? So you've done this a little bit before, but we're going to make it more of a, more of an algorithm now, more of a step-by-step -step kind of thing that we work through all the time. All right. So um, let's start with some examples. And I'm going to give you two examples first. So I'm going to start with um, list the first five terms given by a sub n equals negative 1 to the n. So a sub n is going to represent each one of these terms. When I put a 1 in, it'll be the first term. When I put a 2 in, it'll be the second term. Second term and so on and so on. I put a 10 in, it'll be the 10th term. Now, I'm just so mean, you know, there's going to come a time where I'm going to say, find the 50th term. And I don't want you to go through the process 50 times. I want you to find the rule and then plug the 50 in. So we'll, we'll get to things like that, but I'll make you do that. 50's not so bad. You'll do it out. Is that what you said? 250. No. Okay. Sure. So list the first five terms. Let's put a 1 in. What's a sub 1? Negative 1. Negative, oh, a sub 1 equals, there's no a over here, okay? So this is just negative 1 to the first, which is negative 1. So what's a sub 2? Negative 2. Negative 2? How do you get that? Because it's no. negative no. one. It's positive one. It's positive one because it's negative one squared. So it's negative one quantity squared. Square. And that is a two, sorry. So that is a positive one, true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, what do you think? Negative one. Mm -hmm. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. yes. Notice it? What's a sub 4? Positive 1 again. So if I needed to list the five terms, what would I box for my answer? Very good. So 
those in my first five terms. Negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one. Yep, that's five. So I'm going to come over here and erase this a little bit. It's going to say list the first five terms given by a sub n equals negative one to the n plus one. List the first five terms given by a sub n equals negative 1 to the n plus 1. And I'm saying a sub n. Got it? Not ace of n. I'm not doing that. This is a subscript n. All right, what do I do first? A sub 1. I mean, a sub 1. What's a sub 1 going to equal? 1. It's going to be a positive 1? Yeah. So negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is negative 1 squared, which is 1. What's a sub 2 going to equal? Negative 1. It's going to be the negative 1, isn't it? Because if I put a, if I put a 2 in here and I add 1 to 2, that's going to give me an odd exponent now, isn't it? So this is negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. Yeah, I heard somebody say something. What would you say? It's just the opposite. Just the opposite of the first one. Right? Do I have to go any further, or can I? Do you think you can just box it, or what? Yeah. What are we starting with? Positive one. A positive one, and then a negative one, and then a positive one, and a negative. Then a positive. Okay. So this is important for us. Because you're going to see signs alternating. And sometimes the signs are going to start negative. Sometimes the alternating signs are going to start positive. And your job is going to be to go from these back to the original statement. Okay? So not only do you have to work forward, but you also have to work backwards and come up for the rule for a sub n if I give you a, if I give you a sequence. Okay, so I'm, I have to make sure you know that, okay? Alright. Um, I'm going to shorten that up a little bit and put it right over here. And it's going to say a sub n equals negative 1 to the n. And we're just going to write them out. What's the first term? a sub 1. And what is a sub 1? Negative 1. And then? And then? And then? Okay. And it keeps going, right? That's what that is. So a sub n equals negative 1 to the n plus 1? 1. and then? Negative 1. All right. You guys got it, right? So you need to understand that. Here's another example for you. What if I want you to write this? Right? Um, the rule for a sub n, and I'm going to give you this sequence. So I'm starting off with 3 and then negative 3, and then 3 and then negative 3, and then 3 and then negative 3, and then da 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 da. Keeps going. What do you think? Everybody notice we're alternating signs? Everybody got that, right? Yeah. And we're starting how? Negative. We're starting what? Positive. Starting positive. Right? So when I write my rule for a sub n, I definitely need this negative 1 to the n plus 1. Because I need to start positive. So if I put a 1 in here, it'll square my negative 1 and make that answer positive. And then you just have a 3. You're finished with that. Want to test it? Sure. What would be a good way to test it? 
test it. Plug in a number. What number do you want to plug in? Seven. Seven? I have one, two, three, four, five up here. Pick A sub one, two, three, four, five. A sub four. So let's do A sub four. Negative one to the four plus one times three. What is negative one to the four plus one? All right, so what's four plus one, you guys? Come on. Five, so this is negative one to the fifth. What's negative one to the fifth? Negative one. Negative one times three? Negative three. Negative three. Is that supposed to be my a sub four? Yes. Here's a sub one, two, three. That's a sub four. Yes, it is, and it does check. I could check every single one of them if I wanted to, okay? But it's going to work because the three is constantly a three. The only thing changing in this pattern is the plus and minus sign. Good? You know, some people might write this. Tell me if you think this is right. No. Is it the same? No. Are you sure or no? Yeah. Are you sure? How could you tell? I mean, yeah, you plug in a four, you get negative three, but not. Yeah, if I plug in a four, this would be negative three to the fifth, which not only does the negative to the fifth, but it also does the. Three to the fifth, and we don't want that, do we? No. Okay. It is possible for each of you to do problems and sometimes come up with different answers that, that do give the same representation, but your answers would be equivalent. Okay? Here, try this one. Uh, do it on your own for a sec. Okay, done? Just a sec. A sub n equals negative 1 and to the n times 5. Times five. That's pretty easy, right? Okay. You're not going to have these two things sitting on your paper to refer back to unless you write them on your paper. Okay. Right now they're on the board, so it's pretty easy to say, oh, I'm starting negative. Let me go with this one. And you're not really doing the thinking process, but you need to think it through. Now, how could you test it? Plug in a number. Try any number you want. I would either do a one, two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm going to blow your mind. You ready? No. Yes? Yes. Okay, here it goes. It's a tough one. Uh, let me see. Um, oh, I like threes and fives. I'll do that. Three, five, three, five, three, five, three. Okay, you got the idea, right? Hmm. Do you see this as a plus and minus in your head? And it doesn't it go up and down and up and down and up and down and down. You should see this as a plus and minus in your head. Can you rewrite it so that it's plus and minus the same thing over and over and over again? What numbers smack in between three and five? Four. Four. So we're going to rewrite this using a four. How can I rewrite the number three using four? Four. Minus one, how can I rewrite five? Four plus one. Four minus one. Four plus one. Four plus one. Same thing, right? So my a sub n this time is going to start out with what number? Four. It's going to start out with a four. And then plus negative one, because I need to alternate minus one minus one. Minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. What exponent do I need here? I need an n. Because I need my first sign to be a minus. How could you check it? Plug in a number. Plug in a number. Plug in a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or something. 6 or 7. So you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hopefully you plug in a 7, you get a 3 for the answer. Your turn. Here we go. Let's see if we have a room up here. Okay, ready? Let me think. Um, nine, five, nine, five, nine. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Don't say that loud. 
Okay? Think about it. Write it down. Don't forget A sub M equals. It's like forgetting your F of X equals. We don't do that. that middle step where we rewrite the thing back and forth back and forth so that we can see whether we need to add or subtract right we need a uh, sub n equals seven plus negative one to the n times two you know what would happen if you did if you did n times two or two n no i mean like like after like no not the n times two like the whole thing times two Okay, I get that. Yeah. I'm just iffy about that. And that's fine, but I don't like this. I want this to be n plus 1 because I need this 9 out of the deal, which means my 7 has to get bigger, right? I need a plus sign out of this deal. So if I put a 1 in here, 1 plus 1 makes 2, and then negative 1 squared would turn it into a positive. And then we have our two. Let's go ahead and, and put this down a little bit so that people can see our steps. What number are we picking, obviously? Seven, because it's right in the middle between five and, five and nine. So this becomes seven plus two, and then seven minus two, and then seven plus two, and then seven, and so on. So this is seven plus, I need to deal with the positive negative, positive negative, positive negative. So we deal with that by doing Negative 1 to the n plus 1 starts to be positive first. And then see the 2 over and over and over again? There it goes right there. Now, Ian, if you want to go ahead and, and do this, I'm okay with that. I'm going to circle that one. I'm going to box that one, but I would take that. I'd take it if you turn the whole thing around somehow. Okay, so there could be more than one way to write your answer, but they would be equivalent to whatever answer I'm going to put on my paper, hopefully. Okay, a couple more little things and then we are done. I oh know, it's hot in here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the door open. Want to open the door for me? Thank you. Does anybody know what this is? And I'll tell you what it's not. It's not five! That's what it's not. <laughs> it's not five. No, it's not. It's not five. Like I'm real excited about it. This is called five factorial. Have you ever heard of factorial before? There are buttons on your calculator. You can go into math and hit your menu and look down, and there's an exclamation point. And if you punch it on your calculator, it actually does it for you. Okay, which means the first part of this quiz will have no calculator, right? You can do it yourself. But it means you start with a number given, and you multiply by each integer in decreasing order until you get all the way down to 1. So 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. How much is that? 120. That's 120. Everybody agree? 5 times 4 is 20. 3 times 2 is 6. Times 1 is 6. That's 120. Very good. Here's an example. A sub n equals n factorial. Write out the first five terms. How about the first six terms? First six terms. Um, n sub 1 is 2 plus 3. A sub 1. A sub 2. A sub 3. A sub 4, A sub 5, A sub 6. That's what I need, six terms. Now, what is A sub 1 going to be? 1 factorial? 
which is 1 plus a sub 2. 2 factorial. 2 factorial, which is what's a sub 3? 24. 24. 5 factorial, which is 60. Yeah. I lost you. Where's the solution? Help me. Help me. See, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Tell me where. If, if 3 to. 3 factorial? Yeah. Okay, so this is 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, okay. 6. This is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is, we did that one already. Okay, and I need one more, right? 6 factorial? 700 and? 720? Yes? Yes. So these are your factorials. And if 